Christians Engage family, I'm just going to get going. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We are super, super excited um, to have you as part of our family around the state of Texas. I love what God's done this year because we have been in over 27 churches um, and people, friends, Ian, pause, mute. Here we go. Um, we are super excited because we've been, God has just been moving. We started Christians Engaged right before COVID hit. Like what in the world? <laughs> like four months before COVID, we launched a new nonprofit uh, ministry. I, it's just amazing to me um, that, you know, God opened that door and we walked through it. And so we had to be very, very um, nimble this year. We had to be really sensitive to the Lord. And so um, we just kind of went with the flow and we, you know, did prayer calls. Like if you had told me at the beginning of the year, we'd be doing prayer calls with Governor Rick Perry and our elected officials around Texas. I would have told you that is crazy. That's not what we do, but God had a different plan. And so we actively just did crazy things. Like we sent care packages, spiritual care packages to all of our elected officials in Texas, our statewide office holders, our state Senate, our state reps, our members of Congress, all parties. Um, we got so many thank you notes from people. We even got a, a voicemail from the vice president of the United States thanking us for our Letters of Hope campaign that we wrote to the vice president and our mayors and our county judges during coronavirus. It was really an amazing time. And um, it's just been an amazing year to see God's faithfulness. And how many of y'all know that God is so in control? He loves us. And I've been thinking lately, he loves America much more than I love America. He loves us. He loves this country. He loves this state. And his heart is for every person in this great state to know him and the power of the gospel. And so we are engaged in politics as a, a method to make sure that our freedoms and our liberties stay um, free so that we can share the gospel and so that America remains the great city set on a hill. So if you don't know about us, check us out at christiansengage.org. Um, we have a pledge, which is just our basic um, on-ramp to our ministry, which is you take the pledge to pray with us Mondays at 555. We send you a little text. Um, we send a scripture and we remind you to pray for something outside of your own family and your own life. We also remind you to pray to vote in every election. It's so important that we vote in every election. You know, I know most of you are engaging right now and you're, you know, hopefully have already voted, but if not, you're going to pull 10 or 15 people to the polls tomorrow. But it's important that we vote next year in our city elections, our constitutional amendment elections, our primary elections in 2022. So we have to start getting involved in every election and it's time for us um, to engage with the culture. We believe the body of Christ has the answer for everything that this country is need of. Everything. Um, God is so faithful to lead us and guide us um, by his spirit. And he awakens us to issues of our day. And he says, you know, you start praying and you start getting the heart of God for those things. And then all of a sudden you're the one that he calls you <laughs> into that place, right? And so the harvest is so plentiful, but the laborers are few. And wherever God's called you in this hour to um, impact, whether that's the unborn, whether that's human trafficking, whether that's foster care kids in your community, whether that's holding your city council accountable, whatever he's called you in, in that moment, um, he has equipped you. And we wanna help equip you as well, wherever we have um, expertise, whatever God has taught us, um, we want to help you as well in that effort. So we're super, super excited um, to be with you tonight and, um, and to pray towards that. So I'm going to get going. The word that I had tonight is out of John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Again, I'm going to just say it real clearly. Let not your heart be troubled. We believe in God believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And I just want to remind us all that God is so gracious. He is in control and he knows what's about to happen in our, in our nation, right? 
He knows what's going to happen. And so we're crying out to God for his mercy and grace on our nation tonight. And we're going to start with my good friend, David Barton. Um, we are going to start with David and we're just going to kind of go and everyone's going to pray in the order that we have set up. And so if it's your turn, I'm just going to quickly say your name and you're going to go ahead and pray. So let's get going and just seek the Lord with your whole heart tonight because he wants to meet us in this hour. David? I want to pray a number of Bible verses. I've been thinking on these today. So let me just pray through some Bible verses. Fathers, we come to tomorrow and to the election all over the nation as millions of people will turn out. We don't know who will turn out, but Father, you tell us in the prophets several times that when you whistle, your people come running. And so, Father, we pray that you would whistle for your people, that they would hear you in their spirit, that they would hear that sound, and they would know that this is a battle they're to engage in, and they would come running into that battle, even if they've never done so before. We pray that, that you would whistle and they would come running. And Father, we pray confusion on the enemy. We've seen so many times in the scriptures where that there would be so, such massive enemies and you would actually cause them to turn on themselves. And so, Father, we pray that kind of confusion in the camp of the enemy. Father, things that we're not able to do, but you are, you can cause them to hear the sound of panic or the sound of fear or some other sound that causes them to turn on themselves. And we pray that, Father, not only would they turn on themselves, but that you bring confusion to the works of the enemy what they do is based around confusion anyway, but often they minister to others. Father, we pray that confusion be turned toward them, that they would be frustrated in their designs and their plans, that, that what they're planning, Father, would not work. And the devices they planned, and you've said that when they, they dig a pit, they'll fall in it. And when, when they roll a stone up a hill to, to drop on someone else, it'll fall back on them. And so, Father, we pray a frustration of their plans, all the things that they have planned, all the things that they're counting on, Father, that none of that would come to place for me. If it is, it doesn't matter whatever it is out of darkness, if it's illegal, if it's wrong stuff, if it's corrupt, it doesn't matter. Father, we just pray that it fall back on them. You frustrate those plans so they don't come through. And, and Father, we also pray that we would, that we would have courage. Uh, you've told us in the scriptures that those that, that are being thrown in the lake of fire, the first ones you list are those that are cowardly. And Father, let us not be cowardly. And, and with all the protests that are planned tomorrow, now over 400 protests planned tomorrow at election time, Father, let us not have any fear about what happens. But again, even in those, even in those protests, and the violence is planned, Father, you can confuse that. You can turn it back on, on, on the enemy. We pray for a protection of life, Father, for, for all of those that, that are involved in everything tomorrow, even plans that we, we know about 400 cities, and there's others we don't know about that you do. And so, Father, we pray that all of that be taken care of tomorrow by you, Father. And in the same way that we would show courage, that we would not be intimidated, the righteous are bold as a lion. And even as we're doing this, Father, help separate, help separate the shepherds from the hirelings. It's the hirelings that see the danger and run. It's the shepherds that see the danger and run to it to take care of the flock and to take care of God's people. So, Lord, as we look toward tomorrow, we, we just count on you, Father, to talk to your people. There's so many that are waiting for guidance from you. So many already know what you want done, Father. But for those that haven't made a decision yet, we pray that you would whistle, whistle in their hearts and their spirits and let them make the right decisions. And Father, as we go out and, and throughout the day tomorrow, remind us about praying, remind us about praying for all of those in authority. And while we're looking at presidential, we know that we have elections all the way down to the school board level, Father. And so we pray that you would raise up those into proper positions at every single level. While the media has covered the national stuff, Father, we even pray for those at the local level that you would cause the right people to be chosen to office tomorrow, Father, and bring this nation back to you and back to a land of righteousness. And Father, I ask it in Jesus' name. Hey, Bunny, your, your mic's not on. Yep, there we go. Sorry. Thank you, David, so much. We're moving on. Uh, thank you for joining us. De Havilland, De Havilland, will you take it away? Hear me? Hello? Yes. Go yeah. for it, girl. Yeah, so we're just going to continue on in that vein. 
uh, one of the things the Lord just is highlighting me that, you know, uh, at the end of the day, he sits above, uh, uh, he presides over the White House, he presides. And so I just want to pray for his leadership, uh, his government, his uh, a peace to flood people's hearts in this season. So Father, we thank you that you rule, you reign. God, you sit over the judges, you sit over the White House, God. You have a, a, a meta narrative, God. And so we commit this, uh, uh, this, this election to you, God. We, we pray against the spirit of fear. We pray against uh, uh, even just anarchy. We pray, God, for, for peace to reign in our streets. Father, we're asking you for a divine restraint in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, even now, God. I even pray uh, for people who are, are, are are just feeling uh, weary through this season. God, that you would just begin to strengthen the intercessors all across this nation tonight. Lord, that the spirit of faith would rise up in your people, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you have set the person that you want, Lord, already. I really believe that, God, that we, and we're believing, we're believing even for a second term with uh, President Donald Trump. We're asking you uh, for a second term. We're asking you that life would begin to prevail like never before. Before. We're asking you, Lord, I believe that so many uh, people uh, have been, uh, literally their hearts have been changed towards him over these last six months, God. So we're even praying, God, for all those uh, undecided, all those who finally said, you know what, this is who I'm going to vote for, Lord. You give them courage. You give them the strength uh, to go to the voting polls, even in the minority community, Lord. We thank you for the shift that's taking place, God our young black and Latina voters, God, we're asking you that you give them the strength. You break off fear and intimidation. Uh, you break off anything that would try to hinder them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And so we just commit that into your hands, Lord. I pray even tonight, you just begin to visit them. You begin to encourage them in the spirit in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Haviland. Rick, take it away, brother. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Lord, we just, uh, Father, we're just on our on our knees for before you tonight, Lord, asking for mercy, not judgment. We know what our nation deserves uh, based on the actions over the last few decades, Father, and we we know, Lord, that uh, we have grieved you uh, with our decisions, our what our leaders have done, what we as a people have done. And so, Father, just as individuals, we don't deserve grace. Uh, as a nation, we don't deserve grace. But, oh, how you are so merciful. We thank you for your mercy and your grace in our individual lives. And we beg for that to continue in our nation, Lord, that you would just have mercy on us and not judgment. Father, that uh, that you would raise up more leaders than just the ones that are on the ballot tomorrow. Uh, that you would raise up people with courage. Father, that you would give our people courage right now, just as David was praying. Uh, Lord, there's such fear in our communities and in our churches and in our, even in our pulpits in many places that, that we're operating out of that spirit of fear that you told us not to operate out of. And so I pray for our people to, to truly find that sound mind that we would have uh, that power and love and sound mind. But Father, that we would have the courage to, uh, to study your word that gives us that sound mind, that we would not act just on feelings and emotion, but we would have a sound mind that is is based on truly being deep in your word and understanding like the men of Issachar, understanding the times and knowing what to do. And we just thank you for all the leaders that are on the ballot tomorrow that have that, Father, that 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 have a strong biblical worldview and that, and that have a clear understanding of what we face in our culture uh, and just how evil Lord, the enemy is and, and how the enemy is within the camp, Father, that, that we see that in our streets all across the country and that these leaders that do understand that, Father, that you would give them a vision for how to deal with that and you would give them uh, solid plans, Father, that you would help them to be steeped in your word and look for those solutions that we know you've given us this great instruction manual on how to form our societies, our neighborhoods, our communities, and, and how to deal with all of these issues. And we would once again return to that instruction manual and follow and follow that. And I just pray for that sound mind among our people and that we would move away from this, this spirit of fear. Father, I pray for a vision beyond tomorrow, Lord, that our people would not at the end of the evening tomorrow night or whenever the election is finally called, that they would not say, okay, we're done. Either Donald Trump's president or we lost and Joe Biden's, whatever the outcome is, Father, that they would not say, okay, we just go back to, to normal. But instead, they would have been awakened this year to say that we have a responsibility as believers in a country such as this to live out our citizenship. 
Uh, and Lord, that they would become active, active Christians. Father, I thank you for Bunny and Tracy and this organization and all the other organizations represented here. I pray that you would just lengthen, I mean, grow in, in a magnificent way, in an exponential way, their influence in 2021. Father, there are so many hungry hearts out there. People are interested and hungry like never before. And we have the salt and the light to give them. We have the truth to give them. And so for each of these organizations, Father, you would just use them to really bring about a reformation and a revival in our country. Thank you so much for everybody that's here. And Lord, I just pray for peace tomorrow night, Lord, even as there will be violence in some areas and uh, chaos trying to be created. Uh, Father, I pray that as a nation, you will bring peace to us. Jehovah Shalom. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Rick, for taking time out of your busy schedule. June, one of our great teachers in the body of Christ. Thank you for joining us, June Hunt. Take it away. Whoop, hold on. I'm going to unmute you somehow. You got muted. There you go. Go Thank ahead, you. June. A major concern that I think we would all have is those who have been taught and trained, um, even in spiritual circles, to say uh, you should not vote. Voting is secular, we must be spiritual. And they make uh, voting an issue or politics of any kind, um, almost um, ungodly. When we know leaders can be phenomenal when they are right in God's sight or they are literally handpicked, chosen by God. And I, I think of much uh, I, I, I resound with the previous uh, person who prayed about uh, using scripture because that should be a guidance for us where if we look at the book of Proverbs, um, let's pray for wisdom and let's let's have God's heart on voting, God's heart on the political process. And uh, I can I, I smiled because just as I got on, uh, my friend Angela Paxton, who is a godly, righteous, phenomenal person in politics. She will make a difference. And there are many who are on the ballot. She's not on the ballot, but she's a state senator. And so what we want to do is pray that those who have been mistakenly led to think they have no role in politics, they have no role in voting, uh, they're sincere, but we can all be sincere and sincerely wrong. So it can be that we would have influence, whether it's family members, people at work, neighbors, whoever, uh, just to help them have eyes to see. So Lord, we come before you thanking you for wisdom. Uh, your, your book in the Bible of, of Proverbs says righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin condemns any people. In Proverbs 14, 34, you've made it clear that you care about nations and you care what people literally do. Are they right in your sight? Thank you that uh, you also in Proverbs eleven fourteen say that a lack of guidance for lack of of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. We just pray that we can be a part of even giving guidance to those who don't know the importance of, of voting since um, 25 million Christians last time did not vote. Lord, we would pray that there would be an impetus that you would put on people's hearts to vote, maybe they don't know why, all of a sudden they feel we need to do this and they would get counsel as to who should I vote for tomorrow. Uh, in, um, in your word in Proverbs 25, five, remove officials, wicked officials from the king's presence and his throne will be established through righteousness. So we need to vote certain people out who may not even know that they are tools uh, of the enemy, uh, but they nevertheless, you know who needs to really be in office. And we know that there has to be a plan to accomplish this. 
And in Proverbs 15, 22, you say that plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. So Lord, I pray that even those who are on this, this call, that they would pray for themselves, that they would learn to be wise advisors, wise counselors. It's your counsel that we need. Uh, how, how significant that Proverbs 14, 25 says, uh, a truthful witness saves lives. A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is deceitful. As a Christian voter, thank you, Lord, that you will give us an ability to speak and be a witness in a hurting world, a witness to those who um, need to, we need to take a stand for the court of law. We need to personally testify what we know to be true. And as such, we can save lives even the lives of the unborn. Jesus, thank you for letting us know your words. You are the salt of the earth. When we read in the Sermon of the Mount that we are the salt of the earth, we know salt is a uh, flavor enhancer, but it's also a disinfectant. It's a pre preserver. Uh, uh, th there's a an ability to preserve meat using salt, but taking it to voting, uh, by voting, we can help preserve the constitution. We can preserve voting for leaders and policies that are best among our people for our country. And Jesus, you also said you are the light of the world let our light shine is what you're saying. Let your light shine. Well, we can be a beacon of light shining in dark places, exposing what needs to change and shining the light on the path to change. And so we understand that we need to let our light shine by casting literally a vote, a vote for how you lead us in our lives. It's interesting that uh, we seem to know the scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. Here's another reason to vote. Mark 12, 31, Jesus, you say, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, you present these words as the second greatest commandment. And this agape love means seeking the highest good, the, the best interest of others. And we do that when we vote for those who seek to do God's will, to do what is best in behalf of others. Even Martin Luther King, who was known for nonviolence in our very violent year that we've experienced, he said, our lives begin to end. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. So ultimately, our, our voice is our vote. And the Bible says in Proverbs 31, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. For the rights of all who are destitute, speak up and judge fairly. Lord, we thank you for the recent judge who is now on the Supreme Court. What a victory for righteousness. And you speak up and judge fairly. That's what we need to do to defend the rights of the needy. So Lord, we pray that you would put onto the hearts of those who need to be motivated, moved to vote, where they would be voting in the way that would be right in your sight. We pray that uh, you would protect those who are in the office that's right for them and that you would literally guide the actions of every believer to do what is right in your sight. May we have wisdom from you, feel the impetus that you would have us feel. May we make a difference and we pray for a victorious 
decision that literally would bring uh, glory to you by virtue of the religious religious liberty that has been won over the past uh, few years by virtue of the current president. Lord, we pray for righteousness, uh, for what is right in your sight to prevail. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, June. Truly an honor to have you on with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, our Commissioner Andy Wynn, we're so honored to have him. Andy, take it away. Thank you, Bernie. Jesus, you are our Lord and God. You are the creators of the universe and all things on earth. You are the king of all kings, the judge of all judges. You are the prince of peace. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, on this evening before election day, I tremble. I fear for our nation. We are anxious and worried for our lives, our communities, our nation, and the world, Lord. We place tomorrow's election in your hands, Lord Jesus. No matter what happens tomorrow, we trust in your will, Lord, because we know that your love never fails and your mercies abound. You offer us the best of gifts, peace, pardon, and everlasting friendship with you at your banquet table. Lord, no matter what happens tomorrow, give us the strength to lead humbly and to serve courageously in accordance to your holy words. Let us be your instrument to return America to you, Lord. Let us be your light in the darkness of a secular world. Let us speak for the meek, the voiceless, and the unborn. Let us stand firm and unbound for your justice and for your love, Lord. Fill us, Lord, with gratitude of your great mercy and kindness toward us. And may we never fail to show kindness and mercy towards all we meet so that they too may know the mercy and the goodness you offer them as well. Finally, Lord, we ask that you bless our leaders, the leaders of all nations, at all level, in all areas of our society, Lord, please bless them with your wisdom, with a conviction in your righteousness, Lord, and bless them with the fear for the evil things, Lord. We need you, we need you to guide us and lead us, we cannot do without you. You are everything to us, Lord. In you, we trust, Lord. We pray for all these things in the holy name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mary, take it away. All right. <clears throat> Father, we say tonight, we know that our battle is not against flesh and blood. Daniel 7, one of the best descriptions of the spirit of Antichrist is that he speaks pompous words against the Most High, persecutes the saints of the Most High, and shall intend have a mindset to change times and laws. And right after that, an incredible statement, the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Let's agree on three things. Jesus, first of all, we stand humbly as the people of your kingdom, as the saints of the most high. And with the incredible promise 
that you give us keys that whatsoever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatsoever is loosed, we loose on the earth, you're loosing in heaven. So Father, tonight we say, let the keys of the kingdom draw a boundary around our election laws that were set up righteously in this nation to represent freedom. Father, we bind attempts to circumvent and to break and to dishonor those laws. And we call exposure to every attempt to do so. And Lord, we say, let the laws that you put in this nation over our elections stand. And Lord, have your holy boundary around them. We ask and thank you in Jesus name. Father, secondly, we take the keys of the kingdom, Lord God, and we say that the times and the seasons are yours. And Father, we draw a holy boundary and we take the keys of the kingdom and we lock up attempts to change the timing of the election. And we say that is yours and no one else's and we agree with you in heaven. And Father, we thank you tonight that the times of our election are not predicted by man, but seen and set by you tonight. And we say, let it be so, Lord, kingdom of God come, will of God be done in Jesus' name. And finally, Lord, we agree that there is a wind of awakening blowing across your church. And Father, that we are beginning to wake up and see the difference between kingdom and church buildings. And Lord God, that it is your kingdom and your righteousness that we seek. Lord, forgive us for making it more about buildings and numbers and everything else. Lord, you are waking your church up. You are calling us to your heart and yourself. And Lord, tonight we loose an awakening wind across your church in the United States. And we say, let the leaders wake up. Let the people wake up. Lord, let us be humbled and called to your very face like never before. And Lord, I thank you that revival winds are blowing. And we say, so be it, Lord. Kingdom of God come. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to skip ahead because we've got a couple people that have tight time schedules. So Sean Foyt's on with us and then we'll go to Allie Beth Stuckey. Sean, thank you for joining us. You pray for the state of Texas, brother. <laughs> An honor to be with you guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I, uh, I really believe in my spirit that we're in an incredible season of revival and awakening, but along with that must come a reformation. And so I just want to pray the same thing I prayed last night on the president's Facebook page that, that God would awaken Christians. So Lord, I just pray God across the great state of Texas, Lord, would you awaken your church, God? Yes. Uh, would you awaken your church, God, with the spirit of reformation, Lord? I, we pray God that, that tonight there would be a quickening in the hearts of the church in Texas, Lord, that people would show up to the polls. Christians would show up in numbers that we have never seen in history. Lord, let this happen all across America, but Lord, specifically in Texas and California, I'm gonna get a little, uh, I, this is where I live. I, I pray God that you would stir Christians, Lord. We have seen some of the uh, Christians engagement in political uh, process has been so low, God. I pray that this election, it would turn around. What I pray even right now, Lord, that you would begin to stir in the hearts of believers as they go to bed. They would go to sleep knowing I got to get up in the morning. I got to do whatever I need to do to get to the polls. Lord, we just pray in all of those counties, Lord, in all of those cities, Lord, that there would be a, a quickening, God, that you would release, Lord. And we pray, God, that there would be an incredible, Lord, that, that we would be so encouraged, Lord, that the world would take notice, Lord, of how the church stood up and voted for life, stood up and voted against this tide of Marxism and communism that is coming into America, Lord. We just pray for an awakening in the church, Lord. Not just not just of salvations and revival and stuff that we're seeing right now, but Lord, an awakening of reformation, Lord, to change systems, God, to, to end injustice, 
God, to, to, to bring a, a breakthrough to le- layers and areas of government that we have not seen before. Lord, let tomorrow be a historic day, God. We believe it. And Lord, we take great courage and hope, God, that you are going to do it, Lord. We stand, Lord. I, I just pray uh, against any, uh, any anxiety and fear and heaviness over people, even that are on this call. Lord, that you would release such a peace and such an expectation for, about, for, for what you're about to do in our nation. In Jesus' name. Amen, brother. Be blessed. Amen. You keep going. Bless you guys. Rock Thank out you. America <laughs> with the worship, brother. We love you so much. Just honored to have Allie Beth, one of my heroes. Allie, Thank you for coming on and praying with us tonight. Um, We all have heavy hearts, but the Lord says, let not our hearts be troubled. We believe in God. So go ahead, sister, and pray for us. Yes, thank you guys so much for having me. Dear Lord, thank you that we live in a country where we are free right now to be able to come before you publicly and pray to you. We can worship you. We can talk about you. We can share your gospel. We can even some of us gather together in corporate worship of you. And I just, I praise you that as of right now, we still have that liberty. And I pray that we wouldn't take it for granted, but uh, that we would use every opportunity that we have to glorify you and thank you uh, for the privilege that you have given us to be able to uh, worship you and talk about you publicly. I pray that as we go into this election, Lord, that you would unite the church, that you would bring us together, that you would fortify us and strengthen us. We are split into so many different factions right now. I pray that you would awaken us all to the truth which is found in your word. Lord, I pray that you would give us all uh, wisdom and that the eyes of our heart would be enlightened through the power of the Holy Spirit and that we would be able to come together in the church uh, in brotherly affection uh, in the truth of who you are and in the truth of your word. I pray that those who have been deceived, I pray that those who have fallen away, I pray that those who have believed in a different gospel and have uh, followed false teachers, that you would bring them by your grace and by your conviction to a place of repentance so the church the body of christ can come together and to stand against darkness we know that this is a spiritual battle this is not primarily a political battle although politics are important this is not primarily a battle of flesh and blood this is a battle in the spiritual realm that can only be fought with the sword of truth. And so I pray that your people would be fully armed with the armor of God um, and that we would go forward in faith, trusting that no matter who is president, no matter who takes the Senate, no matter who's on the Supreme Court, no matter who is in the state legislatures, although all of these things are important and according to your word are instituted by you, we know that you are on your throne. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8 says that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I pray that we would find solace in that, that that would be our peace as culture changes, as their standards are always going to and fro and are thrown about on the waves of social whims, that your standard doesn't change, that your word does not pass away, that who you are uh, is immovable. And I pray that our peace would come from that, our strength and our confidence would come from that that even though it is going to be more costly to become a Christian, no matter the results of tomorrow night's election, I think cultural Christianity is coming to an end. Nominal Christianity is coming to an end, and so be it. I pray that you would strengthen your true church, that you would strengthen your true disciples and your true people, and that those who are claiming to be Christians and don't have faith in you, that you would do the separation that you are doing right now, and that your true disciples would follow you in truth and in boldness and in confidence, Lord. Um, I pray for this country, oh Lord. I pray that uh, you would somehow, that you would unify us. And we know that that's only possible through the gospel. Like I I don't wanna unify under any kind of false pretense. I wanna unify in truth. And so I just pray, Lord, that your gospel would go out, that it would take root, that you would do what only you can do, which is turn hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. Let us be a faithful church that shows the world how joy is done, how love is done, how service and selflessness and trust and faith is done, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Let us be a light in a dark world. Let us not cower in our homes and in our corners of comfort, but let us go out and be Uh, be your ambassadors and be your aroma through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, 
Lord, for your son. Thank you for reconciling an unholy, undeserving people to a holy and righteous and wrathful God, Lord. Thank you so much for your gospel. Thank you so much for what you've done for us, Lord. And let that, let that gospel be our assurance, be our hope. Let us count it as joy, everything that we will endure in this life, knowing that in the end, you will win. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Amen, Allie. Thank you for being full of the word and full of faith. We love you so much. Just be encouraged and just know we're all praying for you. Okay. Thank you. Y'all too. Thank you so much. Pastor Mark Gonzalez, can you lead us next? Sorry, we're skipping around a little bit here. Yes. <clears throat> Let's pray. Thank Father, you. We, we come together here with everyone on this call, Father, and everyone that's connected. And God, I'm declaring tomorrow there's a red wave that's going to hit America. God, there's a red wave that's coming, and that wave is not about party, God. That wave is about the blood of Jesus and the blood of those millions of babies, God, that have been killed at the altar of abortion. God, we're declaring that the church is going to arise in this hour, in this election, like it's never risen before, and there's a red wave coming. God, we declare it and we speak it forth even here tonight. God, that you're going to move by your spirit from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And you're going to move upon your people. It's no longer going to be said that only that 75% of the church doesn't vote. You're going to move the numbers because the trumpet sound is blowing. And there's a clarion call that's calling your people, God, to the ballot box. We declare that tonight. We speak it forth tonight like never before. God, we're declaring that as you say in Deuteronomy, I've set before you this day, blessing and cursing, life and death, choose life. We're declaring, God, the church is going to choose life. The church is going to choose life in this cycle and we're coming to the polls in record numbers. It will be said, God, when they do the exit polls, it will be said when the final numbers come out. The church came out like it's never come out before. We speak it forth and we declare it, God, by your spirit in the name of Jesus. We say, God, that you continue to move supernaturally upon your people. Let this be an arise, shine moment. God, as you say in Isaiah, Lord, six. So you say, arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And as it says, and behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and grows darkness of people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And we're declaring your glory will be seen over America at the polls tomorrow. God, your glory is coming forth. Your kingdom's going to be advanced like it's never been advanced before. And we're going to see a move of your spirit like we've never seen it. God, at the ballot box. So we, God, we right now stand up as watchmen and we do not hold our peace. God, to you make America a praise in the earth. God, to you make the church a praise in the earth. God, in this 2020 election, we will show up. The devil cannot have his way. As you said, Lord, that you sought for a man to stand in the gap to make up the hedge that the land might not be destroyed. We're declaring, God, as you said, and you sought and you found none. Or here you have the praying church. You have the Church of America that's standing tonight and today and declaring America will not be destroyed. Her destinies will be fulfilled because there's a red wave coming. And we'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Miles Sweeney, I love that we can gather all around the state of Texas. So if coming from Wharton, Texas, Pastor Miles, take it away and pray for America. Thank you, Bunny. It's such a privilege and a pleasure to be with you tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the, our president. Uh, we cried out to you and we asked, Lord, for a fighter and you gave us that. We asked for somebody who would fight for us, the common people, and for the the. Christian heritage and foundation, the tradition of our nation, and you gave us just that fighter. God, we cried out for someone other than a stereotypical politician, and you answered that prayer as well. And now many, even in the church, are unhappy that he's not more political or speaks more like a politician. Father, we, we thank you that he's a different man out of a different mold. And Father, we ask for you, we cried out to you, would you give us someone who not all hat and no cattle. Another big talker every four years, but doesn't follow through. 
And we thank you, God, that you gave us someone who has followed through on his promises. Not a perfect man, but neither am I. None of us are. We thank you that he's been true to his word in so many wonderful ways, especially so helpful and so beneficial for the church and for the kingdom of God, beginning to move in even stronger ways across this nation. Lord, I thank you for the way he has sided on so many issues. And we're grateful for him. Lord, we thank you for, uh, in our district, our congressional district, to have someone like Michael Cloud, uh, Congressman Michael Cloud and his beautiful wife, Roselle. We're so grateful for them and the way that you shaped and molded them uh, for so many years to bring them to such a time as this. Uh, thank you for the righteous standard that you developed in them and for the way they stand clear and strong on issues that concern our nations and, and carry your light into so many different issues of the day. God, we're so grateful for them. We're grateful and we're thankful for this great nation and this great state. We're thankful that your hand has been on this nation in such a wonderful, sovereign way. And we thank you that you are going to keep your hand on this nation and that by your will and by your moving in your people that this nation has yet to see its best days. Oh God, we thank you for that. We ask for you to sovereignly intervene in this election, God. Sovereignly move in the hearts of your people, especially God. Cause them to have an urgency to go vote so that as Sean was praying earlier, the same thing that you put in my heart, that your people would come out in record numbers. And Father, we also pray that you would move on the hearts of those who are not yours, but move in their hearts and cause them to, to even go into the booth and change their vote so that they vote for a righteous path forward, Lord. This is not an election about right and left. The left has moved so far left that it's the far left and it's no longer right versus left, it's right versus wrong. And Father, we pray that you would continue us down a path of righteousness, continue us down a path where we can be a blessing and a lighthouse to nations literally around the world. Lord, we don't ask you to be on our side. We declare that we're on your side and we pray that your kingdom come on this earth through this election, amen, even Lord, amen. that your kingdom would come on this earth, even as it is in heaven. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Tom Schluter from the Apostolic Prayer Network. Go ahead, Tom. Amen. It's good to be with all of you tonight. I had a very interesting verse the Lord gave me this morning for tonight uh, from 2 Corinthians 2, starting with 15. This is from the Passion Translation. We have become the unmistakable aroma of the victory of the anointed one to God, a perfume of life to those being saved and the odor of death to those who are perishing. The unbelievers smell a deadly stench that leads to death, but believers smell the life-giving aroma that leads to abundant life. And who of us can rise to this challenge? For unlike so many, we are not peddlers of God's word, with water who water down the message. We are those sent from God with pure motives who speak in the sight of God from our union in Christ. I want to pray and speak into something that uh, Sean brought up and then also Mark because uh, Saturday was Reformation Day, um, the anniversary of Luther pounding on that door there at Wittenberg, the 95 Thesis Statements. But what was really interesting is four years later, and we are in that four-year period, is when he had to stand before all of the religious and political leaders of Germany and the Holy Roman Empire, telling him that his message was wrong, telling him that he was speaking lies, telling him that he wasn't lining up with what was true about their nation or about the word of God. And his statement that day, and our statement tonight, dear Lord, let it be known in the state of Texas and in our nation. We will say what Luther said. Here I stand. I will not recant. Dear Lord, we will, we will not water down the message. We will not compromise. We will stand firm. We will make sure that the word of God in all of its fullness, in all of its beauty, of all of its truth and righteousness will be proclaimed so that it will indeed heal our land. We will no longer uh, kowtow, dear Lord, 
to those that want to make us politically correct or want us to follow religious traditions. We are your people. We are the ecclesia. We are your anointed ones. We are your sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are the ones, dear Lord, that you have called in this hour to literally release the aroma of Christ Jesus into our state and into our nation. And I am praying, dear Lord, that as your people walk into the polling locations tomorrow, that they will indeed have the aroma of Christ on them. And it will literally cause a scent, a smell to rise up in these locations that will cause the people to say, what have I been duped with? I will turn my eyes now back to the Lord and we will vote righteousness. We will vote life. We will vote truth. Lord, wake up your ecclesia. Let the aroma that only you can release through us be released so that life, life, as was declared earlier, we choose life and not death. We choose blessing and not curse. Let the aroma of Christ go out across our state and our nation into every polling location and let the awakening and the reformation begin. Let it be noted, the nation America is saved by the glory of the Lord and we stand on that and we will not recant. Amen. Amen. We hope people are getting encouraged. We've got a few more people to pray, but just, just know we're here to just encourage you in this moment. We're all feeling the pressure, right, of this moment in our nation. And so, Doug, will you take it from here? Doug Stringer, we're so thankful to have you part of us tonight. Yes, the Lord is mightier than all the noise. And I'm reminded in Psalm 93, the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. God's throne is established from old. He is from everlasting. The floods have lifted up. The floods have lifted up their voices. The floods lift up their waves. But the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. His testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns his house forever. Lord, I thank you that although we are not beholden to the party of the donkey or the party of the elephant, we are submitted to the party and the government of the lamb and of the lion, the lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of the world and the lion of the tribe of Judah roaring from the throne of heaven now. God, awaken us, O oh God, regardless of our political philosophical, religious, or, or ideological beliefs, God, we must awaken as your church to the reality that the foundations are cracked, God. We need to get back to our moorings in your presence, God. We need the manifest presence of a holy, holy, holy God. And in your presence, God, would you cause us to not look at the optics or filter through our personal experiences, our preferences, but God, that we would come to the cross of Christ and through a biblical understanding, God, that you're a God that is high and lifted up. That, God, there is no other gods beside you. God, you are a God of life. You said choose life or death. You've given us life and death. Choose life. God, help us to be people who value life from the womb until the golden years, God. God, help us to value life at every level. God, help us to be people who hang on to and hold on to and adhere to the sacredness of the, of the institution of marriage between a man and woman. God, that we're not against others who disagree with us, but God, we hold up the standards of the kingdom of God. For when you are high and lifted up, others will be drawn unto you, God. We stand for the right of Israel, your covenant of people, Lord, to exist, God. We stand for Israel, the peace of Jerusalem and the peace of the Middle East. And God, we stand for the religious liberties that you've given to us. As I remember, Bobby Jindal used to say that America did not create religious liberties, but religious liberties created America. God, so I stand according to your word, character, nature, and spirit. And I pray, Lord, now, Lord, grant boldness that we may speak your word with authority by your power. Stretch out your hand to heal, O God. Let signs and wonders be done through your holy name, Lord Jesus. And may you grant your great power, your great grace, your abounding grace, your amazing grace, 
to give witness to the work of the cross and the power of the resurrection, that your great grace will be upon your people. God, help us to cross our racial, denominational, generational lines. May we walk in the humility and the fear of God, recognizing, Lord, it's not about our politics. It's about the principles of the kingdom of God and of the government of the lamb and of the lion. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Woo! I love that God's raising up young voices of Christians that are speaking all over this state. So Jamie Lynn, uh, Jamie Lynn Wannell's on with us. We're so thankful for you, Jamie Lynn. Take it away, girl. Pray over America. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much. Um, I, I just want to decree over our generation that God is raising up millennials who will go into government with courage, who will have eyes to see, who have eyes to see who have ears to hear, who have minds that understand what God is saying, not what man is doing, but what God is doing because the spirit of God lives within them. And so Lord, we ask that you would come and you would pour out your spirit of wisdom and that you would pour out your spirit of your, your Holy Spirit, the resurrection spirit from old ways of thinking into heavenly divine ways of thinking, that we would put false um, lies, that we would put the worldly ways into the grave and that you would resurrect us, God, in our minds and our eyes and our ears to hear you and what you're saying in this nation. And Lord, I declare that we have millennials that are going to go in and continue the fight on the state level to fight for the pre-born. God, I decree and declare that everyone tuning in right now, if you just declare your state out loud, that your state, Texas, that's where I'm tuning in from right now, Texas, you will live the babies in the wombs of these mothers will live in Jesus name. And Lord, we ask that you raise up millennials to go into the education system, to teach curriculum and to teach identity to children. And within the church that you would prepare the church God to be prepared for Roe v. Wade being overturned and for the state level to even um, make abortion unthinkable. Lord, that we would be prepared to take care of the 40% of women who are in the church today that are getting abortions, that we would have a place and a safe place for them to talk, that we would be courage, that we'd be courageous in talking about um, the power of our bodies, the power of purity, the power of our value. And Lord, that kids from an early age would know the purity of heaven in them. And Lord, I thank you for protecting the preborn. So we declare, God, I declare that our generation is rising up in government it's rising up in education, that the family units are being strengthened through millennials, and that the fathers of our, the spiritual fathers, and that the fathers of our generation, that they would turn our hearts to us, and that we in turn would turn our hearts to them, and that you would restore the family unit in America. And I decla declare that the families are being voted for in this election, God, that you will protect the family unit because there's one that's going to bring life and there's one that's going to bring destruction. And I declare that all the prayers that we have prayed as Christians on this earth have been heard and that we are at the tipping point and we will see that massive red wave of the blood of Jesus covering every state with shock and all, just as we did in 2016, that the world would know Jesus you are Lord and you are protecting all of the wonderful things that Christian values bring to this nation in Jesus name. Amen. Sister, I love you. Love you Thank too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just honored. We're going to close out with a couple special guests. Um, our vice president of Christians Engaged, Tracy Bradford. It's been an honor to walk with Tracy um, over this last year. And Tracy, I just want to honor you for being just an intercessor, a prayer warrior for our state, for our nation. Um, I just love you so much and thank you for going on this journey. And then we're gonna have Congressman Cloud close us out. So go ahead, Tracy. Thank you. Well, this has been incredible and thank you to everybody. Thank you, Bunny. And thanks for everybody that's been joining. I'm, I'm so excited. I know tomorrow is, it's a big day. I know people have felt weary, but I don't know about you guys, but after just listening to all these prayers tonight, my spirits are soaring. Um, I wanted to just read from uh, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4. First of all, then I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of truth. 
Heavenly Father, first, we just want to come together and, and I just, uh, we are in agreement from the prayers prayed tonight. All of these prayers that have been poured out, Father, all day long. It was just overwhelming to see people that would say, I'd love to be on your prayer call, but we're having a prayer call in this state or we're having a prayer call here. Father, I've never seen this kind of prayer rise up. And God, we just come before you now and we say, thank you. Thank you that you let us live in this time and all in all the centuries and all the times you put us here for such a time as this. You put us here for this moment and we thank you. And Father, tomorrow we trust, we trust that there is going to be a move. We trust that as was prayed earlier and dec decreed and declared, Father, that Christians are going to get up and move and they're going to pray the truth of God. Father, we either believe you or we don't. We either trust your word or we don't. We can't ride the fence. We can't recreate it to fit our culture or our narrative. We are either with you or we're not. And as children of the most high God, we will vote righteousness. We will vote for a future of life. And Father, I thank you. I thank you that you are already in the heavens moving. I thank you that we have been called by you, the head and not the tail. I thank you that you know the words that are going to come out of our mouth before we even speak. You know all. And yet you give us this precious time to make a stand. And I pray that no matter what we see tomorrow, that people will have to stop and look and say, surely God is in this place. Surely God is here because the reaction from the body of Christ will be love, grace, authority, strength, power. We know who we are. We are your children. We have been called by you and we are ready to go, Father. So we thank you for this great nation. You've given us the privilege to steward and may we continue to steward in line with you and line with your word. And most of all, Father, in line with the love that was shown by Jesus Christ, our savior. Bless you all, Father. And we thank you. And it's in the son's free most high name, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tracy. We love you. <laughs> so we want to end tonight. Um, I just want to, before I turn it over to Congressman Cloud to end us tonight, I just want to exhort the body of Christ. That is the power, the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, right? And just remind us in this night before the election, um, to share the gospel, share the good news of salvation. Remember that Jesus is the one that changes hearts and minds and really at the end changes our culture and changes America. It's one heart as, at a time. And I just recently, just in the last couple of days, got to lead two precious people to Jesus and was just reminded again um, that at the end of the day, um, this election is very important. What we do in politics is very important. Those of us that are called to the government mountain and are serving in government, it's important. But at the end of the day, it's about hearts, turning to Jesus and us walking with him every day of our life. And so we get to wake up guys on November 4th and love Jesus. We get to wake up and walk in his presence. And that's the most exciting adventure of all. So re a reminder to all of the political activists out there who put their heart, tears, sweat, into this and I'm one of those that God loves us and he wants to walk with us the day after this election. So with that, sorry, I turned it over to Congressman Michael Cloud for the benediction. Sure, well, Bunny, I wanna thank you for putting this call together and thank all of you who've been on this call. We all know the scripture, don't get weary in well-doing. It's a scripture that's uh, easier quoted than live, uh, especially when you're coming down the day before the election day. But uh, I just want to thank you for the prayers that have gone forth. I know as I serve in Congress, I can feel the prayers uh, that have gone forth on behalf of our nation. Uh, and, and it is such a critical time and such a critical point and so important that uh, we have come together and continue to come together and that you've all been praying not only today, but throughout this whole season in our nation. And you know, as Bunny was mentioning and others, you know, no, no matter what happens tomorrow, uh, we still have a job to do. We have to continue to be in prayer. And one of the worst things that could happen is the election go exactly like you want it to go. Uh, and then we put our trust in elections instead of in God. And so we'll have to continue to pray and, and to keep up the good 
work of that. But I am certainly encouraged. Uh, someone mentioned the scripture about uh, where in Ezekiel it talks about how God looked over the the, the land and uh, he looked for somebody who would stand in the gap and build up the wall so that the nation wouldn't have to be destroyed. But it, in that context, he couldn't find somebody. But today I see a few hundred people online crying out uh, to God uh, on behalf of this nation. And I know even other nations have held our nation in, in, in prayer over the course of time, knowing just how significant this election is and what it means to the peace and prosperity uh, the ability of the gospel to go forth even uh, across our nation and across the world. Uh, and so thank you for your prayers. Thank you for, uh, for travailing and putting the effort uh, in your civic duty, uh, but, but especially in prayer throughout this time. And so uh, let's pray. Uh, Father God, we come to you. We thank you that you rule and that you reign that you put people in charge and you take them down. Uh, and Father God, we know that uh, this nation was founded on a unique purpose, uh, founded on principles that were unique in all of human history. And because of it, we've seen so much blessings uh, released into the world through this nation. Father God, I know it's not your desire to see that be wasted. I know that you've heard the cries uh, from the founding and before through generation after generation after generation to today. And Lord, we just declare that let God arise and your enemies be scattered. That tomorrow would be a day, Lord, that we see that you arise and that your enemies be scattered, that the work of darkness would be thwarted, that every attempt to bring uh, deception, to bring destruction, to bring uh, conflict, uh, to bring about uh, unjust principles through unjust means that every attempt would be thwarted and exposed. And Father God, we just pray that you, your word would go forth. Your name would be lifted up. Help us to fight for righteousness. Help us to fight for those things that are right. And uh, Lord, you said in your word that if our people called by the names will humble themselves and pray, seek our face, turn from our wicked ways, you would hear us you would forgive us and you would heal our land. And God, for months, for years even, Lord, there's been a remnant in this nation that's been crying out. We've seen the repentance of our nation, even throughout the course of this year and before. And Father God, we know that you said you do hear us and that you will forgive our sins and heal our land. So God, we're just calling you to account to stand on your word in this moment. And we pray that you go forth, that your righteousness will prevail in our hearts, in our minds, in us, and through us, and around us, and specifically, Lord, as we uh, vote tomorrow, and, and as we see the results of this very important election, we just pray that the door of opportunity that is open right now in our nation, Father, for uh, the principles of righteousness, of liberty, those inalienable rights that we hold dear, Lord, that a door of opportunity, Lord, would be held open and that your purposes would prevail. Lord, give us strength tonight. Give us courage. And I pray for each one here, Lord, that you've seen the hearts, you've seen the prayers uh, in, in secret, you've seen the efforts, you've seen all of that. And I just pray a blessing on them as well, Lord, as we uh, go from here and uh, put this in your hands, put this whole election in your hands. And Lord, I'm reminded of uh, what George Washington said uh, when he was praying for this nation and we join our prayers with him. Lord, when, you, when he said, let us therefore rely on the goodness of the cause and the aid of the supreme being in whose hand the victory is to animate and encourage us to great and noble actions, the eyes of all our countrymen and even the world, Lord, we know are all upon us. So Lord, help us to be uh, equipped, help us to be productive and active, uh, help us to work for your purposes and to see your name prevail and lift it up in this nation and in the world around us, Lord. Thank you for not giving up on us. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. The scripture, again, that I, I keep thinking about right now is the word of God says, ask that you shall receive that your joy will be full. It really is a trick 
to make us come to the Lord and ask him, right? That we will receive. And I pray tonight that we've had joy fill our heart. Um, we've asked, we will receive, and our joy will be full. Begin because Jesus is more than enough. His Holy Spirit and reminder church, the word says rejoice always. <laughs> so let's rejoice all the way through the day tomorrow and all the way through the coming weeks. Um, rejoice always. He is with us. It, always he is that good shepherd. And so if you haven't connected with Christians Engage, just want to encourage you to connect with us. Take our pledge to pray, vote, and engage. If this ministry has been a blessing to, to you this year, consider helping us. Consider we are a nonpartisan, nonprofit ministry engaging the body of Christ around Texas. We've been in 27 churches this year. We've written almost 100 articles. We have a podcast. We have done prayer calls, all the things that we've done this year um, with really just very little money. So consider helping us. Consider helping us get some more full-time uh, people out there preaching the gospel and activating the body of Christ. Um, and we just so love you. Let's just pray for the state of Texas. Continue to hold this state in his hands. And he knows us. He loves us. And just so thankful for everybody in this call. I love that the body of Christ can come together from all denominations, from all walks of life, and impact um, what we care about together and to see God move. So thank y'all for taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, we also shared this on Facebook. So if you were blessed tonight, go ahead and text this over to some friends, share it, and we love you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bunny. Blessings, Thanks, everybody. I bless you all. Thanks, Ronnie. Thank you, everybody. I'm bless y'all. Blessings to you.